My name is John Kane. I'm a psychiatrist. I study schizophrenia, and I want to know. My name is Scarlett Wilson, and I have bipolar disease, and I want to know. Hi, my name is Betty Diamond, my name is and, and I study lupus, and I have and lupus, I want and to I want to know. I'm Jeff Lipton, and I study the disease Diamond Black Fin Anemia, and I want to know. My name is Alex, and I want to know. My name is Peter Davies. I'm a neuroscientist. I study Alzheimer's disease, and I want to know. Hi, I'm Eleanor Ferrante. I have rheumatoid arthritis, and I want to know. I'm Betty Steinberg. I'm Tom Rothstein. I study respiratory papillomas. I study B lymphocytes of the immune system, and I, and want, I want to know. know. I'm Kanti Rai. I study chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and I want to know. I'm Peter Gregerson. I study the genetics of human autoimmune diseases. I'm David Eidelberg. I work on Parkinson's disease, and I, and want, I want to, want to know. know. My name's Kevin Tracy. I study diseases that are caused by inflammation, and I want to know. I do science because I want to know. The, the Feinstein Institute attracts people who want to know. The Feinstein Institute attracts scientists who excel in figuring out complex problems. Uh, they approach their patients and they approach their scientific problems like a mystery in some ways, and they want to find out the answer. They also approach this like an artist. Oftentimes the answer has never been described before, so when, when an artist sits down in front of a blank canvas, thing, he or she sees something on that canvas that the world has never seen before, and they bring it to life. And that's, that's a very important approach to excellent science and to excellent discovery. I got my first taste of translational research between college and graduate school. And I was working in a research lab at Harvard where we were studying the immune system. And I realized then that I really wanted to do disease-oriented research that really impacted directly on patients and, and how they were able to handle it diseases and infections. The Feinstein Institute has been home to clinical translational research for a number of years. Several years ago, we opened a general clinical research center. This is a place where science meets the patient. Patients come here. They meet the scientists and the investigators who are studying the disease that these patients have. They interact. They, 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 they give of their time. They give of their blood. They give of their tissues so that the scientists can study this material, can study this patient, and move knowledge forward. This, this can't happen unless there's a clinical interaction. And this clinical interaction is called translational research. That is, the patient and the science come together. I study the genetics of human autoimmune diseases, which is, uh, encompasses many different diseases. Uh, my main interest is in rheumatoid arthritis and also lupus. That includes also type 1 diabetes, juvenile diabetes, multiple sclerosis, inflammatory bowel diseases. What we've seen in the last really three to four years has been an explosion in new information about the genetics of all these diseases. And one of the things that's become apparent is that they are very, very complicated. There are many, many genes that contribute to these diseases in complex and overlapping ways. And any one of these genes tends to have a fairly modest effect. So you have to put them together to really understand what's going on. I'm Eleanor Ferrante. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I was uh, 36 years old when I was diagnosed. My kids were four and seven, and it was awful. For about a year, every day, there'd be something new wrong with me. Finally, after about a year, things started to settle into my joints. Um, I couldn't lift my arms, couldn't close or open my hands. It was pretty bad. Um, I limped. You know, it was really hard. I was diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia about 10 to 12 years ago. I am part of the research. Uh, they take my blood, and some of those vials are part of that research. I'm in an early stage of the disease. But at some point, um, I'm sure it's going to progress. And without research, there's not going to be a cure. My ambition is to find a cure for this disease. And I'm fortunate in partnering with my basic science colleague at Feinstein, Dr. Nicholas Chiarazzi, 
the two of us together bring in an effort for what we call translational research. I look at the patients and I try to find out what the complications of their disease are and work with Nick in the lab to determine what the leukemic cells are doing in the test tube so that we can bring the information back and hopefully try to find better treatments and of course our overall objective is to find a cure. I study lupus which is an autoimmune disease that affects primarily young women, women in their childbearing years and why do I study it? I study it because in medical school I was amazed by the idea that this system that the body has evolved that protects against outside uh, invaders can turn against itself. And one of my fantasies is to develop a post-infectious model of lupus in the laboratory so that we can then see where the immune system goes wrong. Research is absolutely critical. I mean, this is, a, this is a complex disease which affects the brain in a variety of different ways. The brain is um, a, an incredibly complex organ. I mean, every, every word that I'm saying now, every thought or feeling that we have is a chemical reaction that's occurring in the brain. We're just really in the, in the beginning of our ability to understand the different ways in which brain function can go wrong. We know it can cause Alzheimer's disease, we know it can cause Parkinson's disease, we know it can cause schizophrenia. The impact of advancing our knowledge in this area on the lives of millions and millions of people and families around the world is, is enormous. I'm so grateful that we found these doctors, you know, and that for me, I didn't realize how much was lost until it started coming back. We study diseases that afflict patients of all ages, from children to teenagers to young adults. Diseases as varied as sepsis and lupus, arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes and obesity, atherosclerosis and shock, lymphoma and other cancers. This broad spectrum of diseases is being studied not just in test tubes and not just at the level of DNA, but at the level of the patient and of the investigator who has a question that they want to know the answer to. Right now, there's about close to 5 million people with Alzheimer's disease in the U.S. And, and of course, as our population ages, that number is going to rise um, dramatically, actually. The number will probably double within the next 15 years to 10 million people with this disease. And, and these patients require enormous amounts of care. I've been involved in basic research on Alzheimer's disease for many years, but it's only in the last four or five years that I've really seen how we can move from basic science into treatment of people. In fact, since 1999, we've enrolled more than 120,000 patients and healthy volunteers into clinical research here in the programs at the Feinstein at the, and at the North Shore LAJ Health System. That's a staggering number. I think everyone appreciates that Parkinson's disease is one of the major uh, problems with the aging American public. Uh, we're all getting older and uh, modern medicine's just been terrific at extending uh, people's viable lifetimes. But with that comes all sorts of things. There's Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and a host of other medical issues associated with, uh, with healthy aging. Now, Parkinson's disease itself is really a mystery. It's been around for at least 2,000 years. Um, there are descriptions of it in the Egyptian hieroglyphics and uh, probably also in the Bible. But no one really understood at all what it was due to until around 30, 40 years ago with the uh, advent of uh, dopamine and understanding that it's due to the loss of dopamine at certain key areas of the brain. What I want to talk about is Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a lousy, um, faint. The 
Feinstein Institute was created in 1999, so we're relatively young. But in the last three years, we've undergone a tremendous expansion. We've added some 150 uh, scientists and investigators to the Feinstein operations. Because of philanthropy, we've been able to add a new building, which is slated to open in a few months. This new building is a tremendous opportunity for continued growth and expansion of this institute and what we do. The first floor of the building will actually be a conference center where we will be hosting uh, national and international scientific meetings. These meetings will attract scientists and investigators from around the world to come here, making the Feinstein Institute a real destination for education. The opening of the new medical school here on Long Island will give tremendous recruiting opportunities for the Feinstein and enable continued growth and expansion of our research programs. I guess part of what I would like to know is what caused it. That would be important because of my children and my potential grandchildren and to see if there's any danger there. And I would also like to know, you know, if there's a cure on the way. My goal in life is to identify, devise, create a therapy for lupus that doesn't leave the individual immunosuppressed. I want to know how to make sure that nobody ever gets rheumatoid arthritis again. I want to eliminate respiratory papillomas. I want it to be a historical curiosity that people will read about in textbooks and wonder how anybody ever had to deal with it. Um, I think I know how this disease works. I think I know what needs to be done to stop it. It's a horrible, devastating disease to see a loved one slowly going away, you know, slowly going. So I, I don't like to know, why isn't there a cure yet? One day, we will know. And I'm going to know. Hi, my name is Alex, and we're going to know.